Hey friends of the forest, hope all is well out there. Wanted to show you the uh, beautiful place I've found, northern Pennsylvania. And I wanted to talk a minute about goldenrod, because there's so much of it here. And um, there is about 140 species of goldenrod in North America, so it's kind of crazy uh, difficult to discern between uh, the species. But if any of you saw, and if not, you can go back and check it out, I posted about allergies and goldenrod being helpful in cases of allergies. I also have on my website, returntonature.us, uh, an article called Pine Pollen and Allergies. So, you know, a lot of people get fall allergies because a lot of things are producing pollen, goldenrod being one of them, ragweed being another one of them. So actually, the idea is that you don't have allergies, you have autoimmune disorder and it's actually from lack of exposure and that needs to be done in a systematic way. So what I wanted to show you all is that goldenrod um, turns very quickly. So here you have basically the flowers are spent. Uh, there's an example of the flowers still being good. So if you're not super prone to allergies, you can always tonify with eating a bit of that. So if you look at this plant, you see parts of it that are already past. So you wouldn't want to harvest that, you wouldn't want to harvest that, but these parts uh, you would. So I've just uh, finished harvesting a bunch of goldenrod and um, made a fresh goldenrod tincture. So that's available through our herbal apothecary, uh, herbal CSA at returntonature.us. If you're interested, I'd love to share it with you, trade or sell it to you. And um, you can really check out the variation of goldenrod. Now, what happens is if you harvest it in a way that it's already going to seed, like for example this one, and you dry it, it will actually dry and continue to go to seeds. So you'll just have this white fluff, and that's not really optimal for harvesting. So here you see a pretty good one with just the tip finished. And here you see one with a lot of variation. Obviously the tip has already gone to seed. And so you really want to harvest those flowers, the flowering tops, when it's optimal. Um, that's with every medicine making technique. So um, I'll show you all one more thing. And let me know if you have any questions. I think the whole idea of allergies is totally mistaken. Obviously what I always say at my classes when talking about allergies is if it really was pollen, well, think about has there been more or less uh, biomass, biodiversity plants producing pollen in the last 10 years? Obviously the answer is a lot less uh, due to deforestation, habitat destruction, etc. So then has there been more or less allergies uh, in the last 10 years? So obviously we'd say more. So that equation would be broken if it were pollen itself. So it's obviously not pollen itself, it's the uh, inability for the body to deal with that. Um, our bodies are being sort of toxified, the gut bacteria is being killed off, um, our lymphatic systems are being clogged, and we're developing autoimmune disorder as a result of that. And that autoimmune disorder uh, manifests in different ways for different people. So Chelsea says, how did you systematically cure allergies when they're connected to digestin digestion too? Any simple fermentation recipes you'd recommend? Well, on my YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash return to nature skills, and on my website, return to nature.us, I do have fermentation classes on there. Um, so I've live recorded two or three fermentation classes from beginning to end so you can go on there and follow along and make your own ferments and i think that's absolutely irreplaceable no probiotic pill um, no kombucha is going to replace that so you need to get yourself some uh, fermented food that you make on your countertop and that's your diverse probiotics that are in your ecosystem very different than um, sterilized pills where only a few uh, strains are used in mass. That's not really how it works. That's not how your gut is. Uh, you need bacterial diversity. You don't need one to two strains. And actually, uh, lactobacillus and acidophilus will actually be seen as uh, just as harmful to the body um, as all the rest. Here's a wonderful mushroom eaten by slugs. 
probably a uh, Lexinum uh, in the Bolete family, and you can tell because uh, there's striations, there's these grayish brown markings on the stem, so you have pores, right? Could also uh, be like the uh, chicken fat mushroom, which is inedible. So, smell, and then a nibble test. Only because it's a bully. So I'm looking for bitterness or off flavor. And you spit that out. So it is astringent, but usually uh, a lot of these bolites in pine duff, bolete-like mushrooms, are edible. So these are probably an edible mushroom. Maybe the chicken fat, suillus. I forget the species of that. So there's a lot to be said about allergies, and allergies are a huge deal and often misunderstood. Um, I think that when you have digestive allergies, when you have enzyme issues, it's always a gut bacteria problem. So if you don't address that, then you're kind of just putting icing on the cake instead of really getting towards the core of the fact that for hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of years, we've been eating fermented foods. And we've just recently stopped once we got grocery stores because every farmer that preserved their food obviously fermented it to preserve it before refrigeration. So refrigeration only came about in about 1950s. So a farmer growing cabbages would only have had the ability to ferment it. So that was totally a normal practice for a long period of time. And we've just cut that off and stopped and started using all these antibacterial substances and they're in the atmosphere and they're in the cleaning products. So we really need to get our uh, microbiome back so that we can analyze the DNA of things like pollen and your immune system can elicit a response. So basically when you have toxins in your lymph system um, and viruses and bacteria that have died, it goes into your lymph system and your lymph system doesn't cleanse itself because we don't really have a lot of lymph cleansing awareness or lymph cleansing medicinal practice or sweating or running or jogging or jumping and uh, exercising so we don't get a lot of lymph cleansing and then as a result the lymph system gets backed up and it cannot analyze the DNA of foreign cells so basically there's this distinction between me and not me um, the body needs that in order to attack and target the invaders like a virus or bacteria that's pathogenic and once the lymph system is cl uh, clogged, it cannot do that discernment process. And that's why you get like autoimmune psoriasis or eczema, for example. Your body is attacking its own cells and it doesn't realize that there's lead or glyphosate or something next to it. So Chelsea Rose says, I'm suffering from allergies and gut issues all the time for the symptoms. While I work on long-term healing, what medicinal plants do you recommend for uncomfortable symptoms? Well, um, I would recommend, you know, drinking ginger tea on the regular for any gut pain, but also avoid a internal consumption of essential oils uh, like the plague or, and that's in toothpastes, and that's in all kinds of products. So avoid uh, consuming anything that's antibacterial um, and that's really plants are usually not antibacterial they're modulating to bacteria um, then for you know uh, s respiratory allergies what I recommend is nettle tea you can use goldenrod um, as well you can add cleavers um, or another lymphatic and drink that daily and add raw local honey to that and a shot of apple cider vinegar to alkalinize yourself and that will really help um, for the respiratory allergies uh, along with that is restoring the gut bacteria and then if you're talking about gut issues you know you can make nettle ginger tea for example but you know get to the core of what's going on there and usually also with that is improper soaking and sprouting of grains so you're not supposed to eat grain unless it's been soaked and sprouted uh, that causes people a lot of bloating as they wonder why. Uh, Pretty Vagrant says, is chicken of the woods primarily found on tree stumps? Uh, yes, it is. I think I found the mother load. Awesome to hear. Please send me a picture. Let me see it. Um, chicken of the woods, there's two species basically. Um, sulfurous, Latiporus sulfurous and Latiporus cincinnatus. Uh, Cincinnatus is white on the underside and sulfurous is yellow on the underside. And sulfurous tends to grow up trees and 
Cincinnatus tends to grow on the base of trees, so you can definitely find those um, and check them out and eat some yummy mushrooms. Thank you, Chelsea Rose. Thanks for asking. Uh, Kai J. Marie says, have I ever ha harvested lion's mane? I definitely found about maybe 10 lion's mane in my life. Uh, they're pretty hard to find. They like beech trees, and they like uh, beech trees that are decomposing. But I found that there's not a lot of them around, but they're really tasty and totally amazing and super medicinal and anti-Alzheimer's and uh, neuro-regenerative. So they're amazing mushrooms. Anyone else have any other questions? I'm sitting on some really fun trees right now. I'll show y'all. Super comfy. Pretty amazing. Looks like an exercise uh, playground. So I'll show y'all uh, one more great plant here, which is just starting to pop. It's not really ripe yet, but you can eat it. Awesome to hear, Rainbow Country. Well, if you find too much lion's mane, you can always feel free to send it over to me. I'll help you eat it. Lion's mane is like lobster. It's totally amazing. Really yummy. Another mushroom. It's beautiful. So, right, basically the rule of thumb is when you have a bolete, uh, Kai J. Marie says, when a, without a dehydrator, how do you dry mushrooms for later? You slice them and put them on your windowsill or put them in a paper bag and stir the paper bag uh, as much as you can uh, once a day, and that dehydrates them. You don't need a food dehydrator. Otherwise, you can put them on a screen in the light, sunlight. Um, otherwise, you can put them on top of your refrigerator, which is like the warmest place in your whole house, oddly enough. So uh, you don't need a food dehydrator, but you can also get one of those cheapo ones, and those work just fine. Um, Ivy's Multiverse says, would I ever come as far south as Georgia? Definitely. Definitely want to come to North Carolina soon enough, so we'll see. I'm planning on, uh, after this kind of tour to mid-September, I'm gonna head down and harvest pawpaws. Uh, so that'll be a tour to like uh, Pennsylvania, West uh, uh, Virginia, that area. So stay tuned for that. You're welcome, KJ. So back to the bolete. When you have a, you know, pores, right? Brownish cap and none of those scabers like I was just showing, you have basically a porcini lookalike. And the deal is you first scrape the pores you make sure it doesn't stain blue and that gets me to the point where if this is so if it's a brown cap it has pores doesn't stain blue then it's um as long as it's not bitter then it's food now, i don't eat these very much because i find they don't have the best texture although this one since it's young it would be pretty good but i have a lot of mushrooms right now So no bitter flavor, probably edible, but I like to know the first and last name anyway. But that's the kind of rule that Europeans use and they swear by it. Here we have all these, probably Suillus. Yep, I would call them the chicken fat mushroom. Chelsea says, come visit Blackwell Farm in Jasper, Georgia. We have a pawpaw patch. That's awesome. I don't think I'll be getting to Georgia this time around, but We'll see. I got to basically figure out what I'm going to do for the winter. Not sure yet. First thing I got to do is insulate the van and uh, get the solar panel on there, do all the electrical work so that I can insulate it and then uh, do the finishing on the inside. Still not sure if I should put a seat in the back or if I should... Um, skip the seat and just put something else in there show you all what's going on best plants to eat to promote good prenatal health well you know anything with high minerals think about what the baby takes from your body to build a baby you it basically takes what's your bones are made out of so you need to really eat high minerals uh, so that's stinging nettle comfrey horsetail um, you can skip the comfrey people have concerns over that and blackstrap molasses is another one um, and then red raspberry uh, red clover is a good combination 
those are good things. And then if you're dealing with producing breast milk, you want to look at fennel, fennel, fenugreek and fennel. Fennel Greek. Uh, those really produce lactation like no other. Also uh, help with delayed menses, so things to know. Emma, thanks. Really appreciate your appreciation. What's up, Mama Dream Weaver? Uh, listen to the animal says, where am I now? I'm just uh, headed south from upstate New York and headed into Pennsylvania. So here's kind of where the forage mobile is at right now. I haven't been able to do much because I had to just jump on tour. So, because I got the van later than I had hoped. So it's got a bed, a little area for foods, and then my hammock is up there. And what I plan to do soon is put a solar panel on the roof so that I can generate electricity to charge a laptop and my phone and put a seat between the wheel wells, which will kind of section off a trunk area. And I'm trying to get a conversion van seat, which can also fold down as another bed. But the good thing about it will be that it'll be a seat and that will be for guests to hang out and then ride. And from there, I want to swivel these seats so that it can be a podcasting studio. And so no matter where I go, I can always bring people in and uh, do interviews in here or music sessions and do recording. So all donations that uh, you send in to gofundme.com backslash return to nature, go to building that vision. Uh, I want to be a news van, you know, I want to go to areas and cover the news and really share the story. So um, from there, then I'm going to put insulation all over the walls and the roof and the floor. I'm going to build a floor put uh, subflooring and then some sort of floor layer down and then from the back of the seat I'm going to build shelving up uh, on the trunk so basically if you open it from the back you'll be able to access uh, you know all of this will be really high uh, you won't be able to see out of the back but that's fine anyway the mirrors are awesome and then from there I'll put shelving on both sides Inspired by uh, Fernbird, I want to do shelves like she has on the ups, the, the top here, and um, then I'll kind of build a platform above this, and then this will be a secondary area for uh, storage, drying things, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, Low Dahlia, I do have some uh, carpentry skills. Michael Riza, thank you. May it be so. Just generating money, you know, that's been the issue. Now I don't have. I basically, instead of buying some conversion van, which I'm really glad I didn't because I would have looked sketchy as hell, this thing looks like legit, so I'm not getting harassed at all. And it gives me a lot more freedom and options, but it was beyond my budget and I borrowed money for it, so it's been hard to kind of get to the point of now uh, doing the, the, the modifications. But luckily it's been summer, so I haven't needed to do a lot yet, but now that the cold weather is coming in, I want to get it insulated so that I can be wherever I am course insulation if you do it right helps against the heat as well oh yeah Lodalia says sorry I don't know how to pronounce your name Lodilala Lodilala uh, also says milky oats for the mamas definitely uh, anything that builds your bones your marrow red and white blood cells is gonna help build uh, a fetus awesome listening to the animals glad you're gonna make it out to the healthy living festival at Bucks County I'll be there teaching and vending. Hopefully my friend Emily will come. We'll be rocking the table. So uh, check that out. Uh, Lodilala, also my dad is a carpenter and uh, a lot of my friends are stepping up to try to help. So uh, just have been waiting on my friend who does the kind of solar stuff. Uh, he hasn't been feeling well. Starfly Wolf says, radical setup, music studio foraging van, definitely. And one of the great things I'll be able to do is offer like tours to people, like uh, group tours. So then I'll have, you know, one, two, three, four seats and I'll be able to pick up four people, one to four people, and I'll drive them to my favorite foraging spots and teach them. So kind of like a safari, a foraging safari in the forage mobile. Uh, so that's all to come in the next year. Uh, please help support the work in any way you can, whether it's sharing posts, whether it's spreading the word, uh, letting people know that are in the area when I'm coming through to come to classes. It all helps the mission happen. And uh, here's another great plant that's coming in, which is like known as an invasive weed while we ship, you know, blackberries from Mexico all year. So I recommend we 
switch to a cottage industry based on local foods, and this is really one of them. Um, Ivy's Multiverse, I don't know the Myers-Briggs personality type. Uh, what is it? Let me know. Listen to the animals. Thank you for thanking me for spreading the herbal word. May our hearts strengthen and may our resolve be powerful. So here's Autumn Olive, not to be confused with um, Honeysuckle, which doesn't have speckles on the berries. So I'll harvest a bunch of these ripe ones. You can see there's a bunch that aren't ripe and then there's ones that are ripe. So we're just early in the season here. So at right now, these are gonna be pretty tannic and people eat them as they are. And you know, you can eat a couple handfuls like this. So hopefully you can see they have speckles. And if you can't see that, return to nature.us, I have an article on autumn olives and I also have an article on fruit leather, uh, making autumn olive fruit leather. So they're really tart, they're really yummy, super high in lycopene very abundant nobody knows what to do with them um you know invasive plant people target them and permaculturalists grow sea buckthorn while these are right next to it and basically there's really no difference mm. these are getting pretty sweet so the thing actually that a lot of people don't realize about these is that if you freeze them if you harvest them and freeze them you do what's called bledding, which is a old homesteader technique. And that drives the, tannin a the, the tannic acid out of them, and then they become super sweet. So that's really important when you're trying to unlock uh, the knowledge about autumn olive, is there's a preparation technique that a lot of people miss. So if you make a jam or anything from it, it's really tannic. And so if you eat enough of these like I'm doing, you start to feel like your mouth is, is really sandy and puckering. But if you uh, freeze them first, that's mocking the natural state of what would happen over the winter. However, birds really eat them. So by the time that process happens, they're pretty much gone. So you want to harvest them early, and then you want to do what's called bledding. Kai Jam Marie. Roadside flowers make me sad because I can't pick them. I feel you. Believe me, I grew up in New Jersey as well. I think you did too. And I've had to let go of a lot of abundance. But the roadside is a great place to learn. And then you have to find your spots away from there. So don't worry. They're doing healing on the earth. You know, plants apply their medicine to the earth. So when there's burdock dandelions on the side of the road they're detoxifying the pollution that we put there so they're already doing their herbalism so we don't want to take them away from their herbalism <laughs> North Brunswick what's up Urkan hope all's well um, Ivy's Multiverse says why do I think there's such a misunderstanding of the plant world today with people targeting invasive species because um, part of it is white man's guilt we think that as Europeans, we should just restore it to a Native American habitat, even though we've destroyed the Native American habitat. Um, secondly, there is a biodiversity issue. So certain plants decrease biodiversity in a small area, but I always argue not more than strip malls, not more than concrete, not more than uh, town housing. You know, so plant. What's more invasive, plants or Walmart parking lots? You know, what destroys more habitat? So that conversation is usually not had, and it's usually not discussed, uh, which is something I do a lot at plant walks. Um, the other factor is, so you have a biodiversity argument, but you also have the fact that we have such small habitat that of course the plants are gonna crowd together, and nature ebbs and flows, and I, I trust in that process, and a lot of people don't, and they think that they have to manage the ecosystem um, the other problem is like certain plants have come here and the deer, etc. don't eat them. But in each case, there is always a secret. Like I'm talking about these autumn olives, like the best thing to do with invasive plants is to make a food system. I think that they're like abundant plants. And what we should do as a society is always shift our diet to the plants that are most abundant. And these happen to be the most abundant plants around. So where's the local autumn olive jam? not happening but that's up to you all you know that's where our 
work is to build that cottage industry, not to give it to schmuckers, you know, to be that change, to be the Etsy store, to be the cottage industry that brings these things up. So as the plants tell me all these intricacies, I try to share them with everybody so that we can build it together. Um, Hmm. It is a great question, Ivy. Thanks for asking it. Your host, Stacy, says, Do I have a recommendation for plants to utilize on a daily basis for general health? Your thoughts on hemp CBD oils? Well, general health, anything with minerals, anything adaptogenic, anything immunomodulating, and uh, anything that's tonic. Those are the four categories of herbs, of which there are many. Um, consume them on a regular basis. I consume medicinal mushrooms, you know, uh, horsetail, nettle, ashwagandha, um, to name a few. Adaptogens, immunomodulators, tonics, and nervines. Those are some uh, types of plants, and if you Google any of those terms, then you'll find a whole bunch of them. Um, for hemp CBD, I think CBD is good. I think it's anti-inflammatory. Um, it probably is anti-cancer. It's not a cure-all. You can't just keep eating McDonald's and then have a little bit of CBD and think that it's going to cure you of everything. Um, I still think it should be in conjunction with other dietary food lifestyle changes. Yeah, lo, di lo de la la, eating off the local terror. Everybody's got to use that word these days. It's the big thing. So, autumn olives are amazing. Definitely look out for them. Often, sadly, they're around roadsides a lot. I wouldn't recommend eating those, but, you know, if you think Schmucker's Jam is grown in some wholesome place, you know, wherever those grapes were, wherever that sugar is. Oh, pretty vagrants. Hope all's well out there. Haven't seen you in a while. Hope everything's going well with your life. I've definitely been down in South Jersey a bunch, so feel free to always visit connect send me a message anything like that does anybody else have any questions on anything we've covered or anything we haven't man these are super yummy you know the thing about wild food too is every plant has a different ratio of its own chemistry um, and that means that every tree plant tastes different so sometimes you get sweeter trees, sometimes you get more tannic trees, and that's because nature, each species is invested in creating diversity, and that increases their survivability. So by varying the ratios of chemistry within their bodies, that's what enables them to survive things like mass extinctions. Wow. I just found a hawk feather hanging out there. So it's definitely a hawk. Maybe a red tail hawk. It's of course illegal to possess that because it implies poaching. That's ridiculous. Um, so I won't tell you what I'll do with it. Ivy's Multiverse says, Sadly, I saw about 200 feet of blackberry bushes die because they were sprayed. It's such a shame. And then they'd go buy blackberries from Mexico. So it's kind of funny because it's like the anti-Republican argument. They're all about like smaller government localizing and all this crap. And then they'll spray local food with poison and then have no problem complaining about Mexico, but then they'll buy all their food from Mexico. So I think that's uh, really important. Uh, yeah, I think they'll come back to the same location, but will they be poisoned for the next 10,000 years? Again, it's like, I try to eat all organic. It's not like organic is all like coming from heaven. But if you're going to eat like McDonald's hamburgers. How many McDonald's hamburgers does it take to equate the toxicity of those sprayed blackberries? And that's something I think people don't really talk about or consider. So you just have to cross compare. Like one uh, package of ramen noodles in heavy metals, probably a lot, compared to something that's local that's been, you know, by the roadside with heavy metals. We don't do those re those studies. There's not really a lot of information about that, but I guarantee you if it was done, it would really even out the uh, dialogue, even though that's sad and a shame. Um, 
I always try to make the conversation more gray than black and white. A lot of people think because it's organic that it's like, you know, coming from Keebler elves in heaven. And it just ain't true. There's still a lot of toxicity with that. A lot of issues there. Mmm, that was so good. Thanks for uh, snacking autumn olives with me. Show y'all another thing here. Uh, so here's my, somebody asked about my mushroom drying. And here's a drying rack. So these are older ones. These are hard as can be. Totally finished drying. So this is all gonna be my stash for the winter. So I'll be making stir fries and soups. So I'll have these and you just soak them uh, overnight in water. And then you, you take them out of the water, you wring them out and you chop them. And then you use that water for cooking cause it's full of flavor. So that's kind of the broth and the mushrooms. Um, Ivy's Multiverse could I says, could I pick berries when they return and spread them into another area? You definitely can. The question is how many generations is it going to take for those berries to um, detoxify themselves? You know, maybe a couple. Hard to know. Uh, your host, Stacy, thank you for uh, enjoying the lymphatic system wisdom. It's really important. That's how your immune system is built. Uh, JDZZ9 says, any good foraging literature you recommend for foraging in southern Texas? There's a, a great series of books called Wild Plants of Texas. It's totally amazing. Uh, if you're in Houston, I hope that you're okay uh, with the hurricane there. It's pretty intense. Pretty amazing um, how like people like Pat Robertson, uh, who's like a televangelist, when Haiti got hit with hurricanes, he was like, oh, because they're not right with God and they're not close enough to God and they're sinners and they need to repent and all this horse shit. Well, it turns out that, uh, that this new hurricane in Texas really hit oil companies. Uh, they're going to lose billions of dollars. Hopefully the U.S. government will not subsidize their loss because it's their reason. You know, it's their fault the storms are getting worse because of all the pollution they're putting into the atmosphere. So... Um, really ridiculous. Pat Robertson needs to go on uh, TV and say, oh, maybe the oil companies aren't right with God either. So they're getting theirs. Um, so we should uh, be mindful that uh, part of the aspect of the uh, hurricane in Texas is that all the oil refineries got their asses kicked by nature. So they're going to lose more profits. Uh, also, to keep you politically updated, Rex Tillerson is out next. If you know, he's the CEO, ex-CEO of Exxon. He was working uh, for the State Department for Trump. He's out now, <laughs> or at least next week. So Trump has fired pretty much everyone in the administration. Um, what I wanted to show you all is these are honey mushrooms, armillaria. And uh, let's see. There's a look at the mushrooms I've harvested, and those grow at the base of trees. And um, these are the ringed honey mushrooms. So Armillaria, I believe, is Melia, or Tabasens is the uh, no, not ringed honey mushroom. So here is the look at the ring, right? I broke that off because it wasn't even properly formed, and that's a good time to harvest them. You just have to be mindful that you're not harvesting... Uh, jack-o'-lanterns which are much more bright orange um so you got to get to know jack-o'-lanterns before you harvest honey mushrooms but they're totally delicious edible and they're around now let's see down with the oil up with the mama earth uh Lod lodi lala says what kind of trees do the honeys grow by uh they usually like oak and maple they'll grow right at the base of oak and maple trees um yeah they're really great Anybody else have any questions? Feel free to ask. Excellent. Ah, uh, well, remember to keep growing, seeking the medicine, seeking your inner nature. Uh, Lodi Lala, yes, I have lots of Rishi tincture and, um, as well as turkey tail tincture available. I'm working on a five mushroom extract, but for now I have five single mushrooms, no, four single mushrooms. So I have turkey tail, Rishi, maitake, chaga, which I'm almost out of chaga, and, uh, birch polypore. 
And so anybody feel free. I have tons of tinctures available. We have over 30 herbs tinctured and mushrooms. Uh, a lot of this is coming from wild crafting as I travel. I'll actually show you all what I have now. Made goldenrod fresh tincture. There's the new one. So please support our work, you know, and help this mission thrive, help it to continue to happen. It does require resources, money uh, to continue doing this. So if you uh, would like some herbal medicine, please support us. Uh, you can check it out at herbalcsa at return to nature dot us. That's our email for uh, our herbal goodies or send me a private message and I'll send you the tincture list that we have. So we have lots of reishi. Here's a couple of the magical things we make elderberry elixir tea blends ashwagandha tincture bee propolis turkey tail that's all i got left in the van let's see what else is in here we got t-shirts organic return to nature t-shirts almost out of everything i brought immune support formulas I love to do custom formulations as well if you're interested for a tincture blend or a tea blend or both that's a custom formula i'd love to help formulate for you love doing that and uh listen to the animals glad you love our tinctures please purchase from local small businesses like myself um of course amazon just bought whole foods so that's going to change a lot about the sustainability organic and ethical industry glowing ah. lobelia tincture again another one heal all so this is all stuff as i travel i harvest and i'll dry it on paper bags and things and some of them i'll make fresh and uh then i'll drop these off at the apothecary and my friend lauren uh kind of manages the apothecary there and we bottle stuff up there and uh, i'll be there all next week so if you're in howell new jersey area and you want to come by please let me know actually in two weeks i think after the bucks county healthy living festival um, michael reza says how do you lo use lobelia of course i always recommend that we say work with these are our plant sisters. they are older than us uh, so we work with our grandparents we do not use our grandparents and uh Lobelia is a respiratory herb. It's basically in place of steroids, so asthma or uh, shallow breathing. It's amazing for just a drop or two. Uh, Listen to the animal says, where do I collect the reishi from? All along my travels, uh, I collect reishi. So there's a lot, wherever hemlock trees are, there's lots of reishi. So I've harvested, probably sustainably harvested about 20 pounds of reishi. I actually, no, I gave it away. I had one. Um, so then I'll slice them, dry them, double extract, tincture them. It takes all together like months, you know. Um, let's see, let's see. Trying to get the... Uh, where did you collect the reishi from? What state says listen to the animals? Um, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania. It's all around. Um, do I, Ivy's Multiverse says, do I ever find dill weed in my neck of the woods? No, dill does not grow wild here. How do I keep my teeth fresh? I brush my teeth. I use a combination of, uh, right now I have bentonite clay, turmeric, and um, what's the other thing? Baking soda. And then uh, if I want, I'll do like a squirt of uh, OSHA and I'll swish around with that and then dip my toothbrush into that uh, powder. I'm really into tooth powders instead of toothpaste. You can pack a lot more in a container. So um, then I'll brush my teeth with that powder can't even see my teeth they're still in there so there's the container i use and i just have a you know powder with all kinds of uh you could do anything in there salt horsetail um mineralizers and uh, baking soda you can put coconut oil in there too it just then becomes all gloopy and gloppy so I haven't done that in a while. Let's see. Please feel free to uh, buy our turkey tail or reishi tincture, double extracted. Did a lot of work in prayer and medicine making. Pretty vagrants, definitely come by. It would be really fun to uh, have you visit and uh, I'll be there. Mycorrhiza says, Cardinalis and the native blue, big difference? Ah, yes, work with, thank you. Um, you know, 
Lobelia inflata is the one that's commonly worked with. Um, I don't really know about cardinal flower, although I have a feeling they're all similar applications, but nobody knows, unfortunately. Listen to the animals. Yes, uh, the northeast is where I harvest most of the reishi, but they're all around. Uh, Pretty Vagrant says, Damien would love to see me. I'd love to see him too. I'm sure we can go out foraging and have some fun. Awesome Ivy's multiverse. Uh, Pretty Vagrant says, can't use white birch for cleaning teeth also. Yes, you can use anything that's antiseptic and a twig will make a great tooth brush. And so I'll try to find the ones I have around. My chew sticks. I've got some black birch. That's one of my favorite. There we go. So for example, black birch, break off a twig, chew it. You can see the bristles now. And so by the time you're done chewing it, it will, you'll get all the antiseptic uh, chemistry of the birch into your gums. And then you can actually brush your teeth with the bristles. So those are the kind of primitive toothbrushes. I do that as well, chew on a stick. It's good for your health. Use sassafras a lot. Uh, black birch is my favorite. And then um, also spice bush is really good. Miswak. La, 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 la. Cambium, pretty vagrants. Glad everybody's feeling inspired. Have a great week as well. Sending y'all lots of love. Take a deep breath. We'll own. Shanti, shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Thanks, friends. See you soon. and herbalism videos on my website at returntonature.us. Happy trails, friends. Mm -hmm.